Okay, good morning. Let's get started. Have you guys watched the video that I posted? The pre lecture assignment? Yes. About the charges. Sorry, what's that? Yeah. Yes. So the main uh, point. There is, you have two types, types of charges, positive charge and negative charge. Um, the origination of the charge is the constituents or the fundamental particles in an atom. So an atom has central nucleus surrounded by uh, electrons, okay? And electrons are negatively charged Protons are positively charged, okay? And in, 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 a, in, a, in a neutral atom, you have equal number of positive and negative. And when there is unequal number of positive or positive and negative, you have a charged atom, okay? So that's what the lecture is about. So today we'll talk about um, interaction between charges, okay? So what that means is if you have, if, if you have two or more charges, how they interact with each other. That's what we want to learn about today. So interaction between two or more charges. And the concept here is exactly same as uh, the force concept that you learned in physics one, okay? If you know how to deal with the force, it won't be that difficult for you to do the things in this chapter. It's exactly the same. So if you remember uh, the gravitational force between two masses, let's say you have two masses, M1 and M2, and we know that Newton's gra gravitational law is basically uh, G M1 M2 over D squared, right? So what that means is whenever there are two objects that, I, that are separated by distance D, they attract each other with the force given by that. Okay, now there are two things here uh, you need to consider which are very important. One is the force, the amount of force these masses exert on each other. It depends on the product of the masses. Okay, so this depends on how big the product is. So what that means is if you somehow double one of the masses, let's say you double this one, keeping the distance same. So let's now, let's say this is two M1 and this is same M2 and you keep the distance same. So now what's the product here? Now the product is two times the previous product. So now we have two M1, M2. So you double the product. When you double the product, the force will be doubled. Okay, so now you have two F. If you somehow triple this, okay, somehow you triple this one, then you triple the product and that will triple the force. So that's the idea of the force depending on the product of the mass, product of masses, okay? So exactly same kind of thing here. So we have two charges. Um, charges are represented by Q1 and let's say this is Q1 and that's Q2. 
and they are separated by distance d. Okay, so just like here, these two experience some force, and if you watch the video, then you might have seen that um, like charges repel. and unlike charges attract. So that means these two charges will repel each other. Okay. So the force this one exerts on this one, we call it force of one on two. And the force this one exerts on this one is called force of two on one. Okay? And from Newton's third law, these two forces are equal and opposite. So F two on one is equal to minus F one on two. Okay? And they are vector quantities. Yes, yes, you can do that. So instead of F uh, one, two on one, I mean, you can just write F two one and F one two. So that means force of two on one and force of one on two. Sometimes in some textbooks, they also write force of, they just like write opposite like F one two. This is like F of F on one by two or something like that. Okay, so but here we'll be using F of two on one and one on two. <clears throat> okay. So the charge is measured in unit called coulombs. So Q has the unit coulombs. So just like the gravitational force, this force, which we call electrostatic force or electric force. So the electric force depends on the product of the charges, Q1 and Q2, okay? So how much charge they have that affects the force between the charges. So again, if you double one of the charges, keeping the distance same, say here you have force of F, or let's say just give a number, let's say 10 Newton, 10 Newton. Then if you double this one, let's say you double, you don't have to make it bigger to make the charge doubled. So let's say you have now 2q1 and this is q2 so if you double the product so the force will be doubled okay you need to draw a longer force here so this is 10 newton 10 newton sorry 20 newton okay now you one thing you need to see here is although they have different amounts of charge one has 2q1 and other one has q 2q2, or uh, in other words, let's say you have one has one Coulomb charge and other one has three Coulomb charge. So people may sometimes get confused that this may exert more force on that because this, amount, this one has bigger charge. It's not like that, okay? So from Newton's third law, the force exerted by this one on that one, let's call that F of two on one, no matter how much charge they have, they exert exactly same force on each other. So F one on two. So don't be confused that the bigger charge exerts more force. It's not like that. So they exert exactly same force. So again, main point here is force is directly proportional to Q one and Q two. That's the first point. Now, second thing, very important thing, okay? We know from gravitational force 
the force between two any objects or gravitational force between two any objects that are at distance d is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them meaning greater the distance less is the force okay now what is this this means okay so what that means is there, there are two things that you usually deal with in physics one is called inverse relationship or inversely proportional very important um, mathematical concept and the other one is uh, inverse inverse square relationship inverse square okay so for example uh, from your physics one um, we know that acceleration is inversely proportional to one over mass so what that means is if you let's say you have um, mass and acceleration uh, let's say you have acceleration mass of one kilogram for a specific force let's say when you apply a specific force to one kilogram mass you produce some acceleration okay let's say 10 meters squared now if you double the mass make it two kilogram because it's inversely proportional so when you increase the mass that's the, that's not 20 that's two so you, you you reduce the mass to one half so you get sorry you reduce the acceleration to one half so you get five meters per second squared if you quadruple the mass i don't know why i'm writing four kg you reduce the mass to one fourth that is 2.5 meters per second squared okay likewise if you uh, let's say do, reduce the mass to one one half when you reduce the mass to one half that doubles the acceleration so it makes it 20 meters per second squared okay so if you double this if you double the mass you double the acceleration if you reduce the mass to one half you double the acceleration it's just opposite kind of relationship okay when one goes up other goes down by the same proportion so this kind of relationship is called inversely proportional relationship now there is this inverse squared relationship where it's not like that but let's say you have distance and force for let's say one meter or let's say four meter force is um, hundred newton okay so in inverse if you double this it is reduced to one half but in inverse square if you double this let's say eight meters this would be reduced to one quarter not one half but one quarter because we have a square here okay so this would be 25 newton so doubling this reduces it to one quarter uh, if you quadruple this let's say 16 meters then this would be reduced by 16 time 16 times 1 over 16 okay this is 100 over 4 so this is this kind of relationship is what we called inverse squared okay likewise if you reduce this to half if you make it two meters we know the force will increase if we decrease the distance but by how much it will be quadrupled so it will be if you reduce the distance to half force would be increased by four times so it would be 400 newton if i <clears throat> reduce the distance by one quarter to one quarter from four to one then the force would be increased by 16 times so this would be 1600 okay so this kind of relationship is inverse squared so be very careful with inversely proportional and inverse square relationship so in case of gravitational force the force between two masses is inversely proportional to square of the distance 
exactly same kind of relationship for the charges. You have two charges separated by, let's say you have Q1 and Q2. They are separated by distance D. The force between those two charges is inversely proportional to square of distance between them, okay? So now we have two, two relationships. One is that and the other one is F is proportional to Q1 and Q2. Now when you combine these two, you get um, proportional to Q1, Q2 over D squared. Okay, now in order to remove this proportion, proportionality sign, you need to introduce a constant. So let's say that constant is K, Q1, Q2 over D squared. So that's the force between any two charges, okay? And this is exactly the same as the force between two masses. Uh, in case of gravitational force, we have constant G, and instead of charge, we have M1 and M2 with the distance D squared. Okay. Now this is a vector quantity, so you need to consider both magnitude as well as direction. So F is a vector quantity. So both magnitude and direction are important when we calculate force. So let's see an example. So let's consider an atom that has central proton and consider an electron okay. and the distance between the proton and electron is 5.29 times 10 to minus 11 meters. So we want to find part one, we want to find uh, gravitational force between these two objects or particles. So F gravitational. And we want, we want to find electro, electric force between the two objects, two particles. And compare these two forces. We want to find the ratio the next thing is we want to find ratio of these two forces. F E and F G. So how do we find gravitational force? It's given by, it's given by G M1 M2 D squared. So G, the value of G is constant. It's 6.67 times 10 to negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Mass of the first particle is proton. The mass of proton is 1.6 times 10 to negative 27th kilogram. And the mass of electron is 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kilogram and that over the distance between the proton and electron is 5.29 times 10 to minus 11 meter squared. Okay. So that will give me, if you do the calculation, that'll give me 3.6 three times 10 to minus 47 Newton. It's very, very small force. That's almost negligible. So the gravitational force depends on the mass. Okay, bigger the mass, more is the gravitational force. You see, because the mass of the proton and electrons are very, very small, so you get very, very small force between proton and electron. Now let's see the force due to the charge.
So this is a gravitational force. Now electric force is constant K. The value of constant K is, it's always constant, same value, nine times 10 to nine Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Okay, that's the value. You don't need to memorize it, but you need to know what the value, uh, what that is. So constant K, nine times 10 to nine. And then the first charge, the charge of a proton. So they have same amount of charge, okay, proton and electron. Unlike mass, they have different masses, but they have same charge. So the charge of proton is, if you guys remember, from your maybe uh, some biochemistry or some other courses. It's 1.6 times 10 to 19. Or, uh, let's see. Yeah, so 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 Coulomb. And for the electron also it's same. And distance is again same, 5.29 times 10 to minus 11 meter squared. So you do the calculation, you get 8.22 times 10 to minus eight Newton. It's small, but compared to this force, gravitational force, it's much, much large. It's much larger than that force. Now we also need to consider the direction here. We can just say, uh, instead of using the direction, we'll just say this is attractive force. For now, we'll just say it's attractive force. And this is a repulsive force. So now we need to find the ratio um, of these two forces. Fe is 8.22 times 10 to minus eight Newton. And Fg is 3.63 times 10 to minus four Newton. So if you take the ratio, you get, it's a big number, 2.26 times 10 to 39. So electrostatic force is that many times bigger than the gravitational force. So electrostatic force is small range force. Closer they are, bigger is the force, okay? Whereas gravitational force is mass dependent force. Bigger the mass, more is the force. Oh, sorry, I, 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 my mistake, not repulsive. That's good point, sorry. Attractive. That's attractive. Yes. Again, we are just considering the magnitude here. So for now, let's not worry about the duration. Now the duration would play very important role in the other problems. We'll see that. But for now, let's just consider the magnitude, okay? Did I say that? Uh, I was asking, what did you say about distance increases as uh, No, I, what I said was uh, electrostatic force is short range force because they are very, very close to each other. So the force is very, very big, okay? The distance between the proton and electron is very, very small. See the distance here. It's five times, 5.29 times 10 to negative 11. And that's the reason why the force is such, such a large force. And and this force is, this gravitational force is very, very small. The reason is they have very small mass. So this force, gravitational force, is mass dependent force. 
bigger the mass, more is the gravitational force. And this force is distance dependent force, okay, usually. Shorter the distance, bigger, bigger is the force. So most of the things that you can see in this physical world, I mean, this world where we live, are bound or held by this force, electrostatic force, okay? All your cells, DNA, RNA, all those things are held together by that force. And it's because of this, this relationship, we have, the, the shape that we have right now, okay? Because the, the, our shape of the body is due, due to this, this force, this, this kind of relationship. If it were like that, then probably we would not exist in this world. This force would rapidly decay, okay? The, the, the particles won't be able to held, hold each other. They won't be, uh, uh, they, they, would, they would not be intact with each other. So because of that, everything is um, held together in certain shape. Okay, so that's that. Now let's look at a problem. Let's say we have a charged particle, another charged particle. Okay, so the first charged particle is 10 nanocoulomb. So this is 10, positive 10 nanocoulomb. And the second particle is also 10 nanocoulomb. And let's say there is a third charge here. So this is positive charge, that's positive charge. And we have third charge, which is also positive, but this one is one nanocoulomb. So we want to find force on this one due to these two charges. So let's call this one, let's call this two, and this is three. So we want to find force on three due to one and two. Okay. So this problem is exactly same as your, the problem that you saw in your physics one. So let's say you have a box, okay? And then someone is pulling this box from the right side and someone is pulling the box from the left side. So let's say this is F1 and that's F2. So what is the total force on this? exactly same kind of problem. What do you do to find the total force? In this case, what do you do to find the total force? Yeah, so you need to add them vectorically, right? So you do that, F1 plus F2. That gives you the net force. So we do the exactly same thing in this problem. Um, because this is one dimensional problem, so we don't need to actually worry about the vector because both are in same direction, I mean x direction. We can just use the negative sign to consider the sum. We don't need to worry about the angles because we know this is positive, so we can consider this to be positive force, let's say 10 Newton. And when we consider this force, let's say it's two Newton, we put negative sign for that because it's along the negative direction. And then you just add them, okay, 10, minus two would be eight Newton. And the duration is to the right, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Now let's look at um, this problem. So let's call this force, now this, so let's use different color here. So the force on this, by that one, we call it 
f 2 on 1 okay it's that way because this is trying to push this charge away from the away from it okay because there is repulsion and the force due to the charge on the left would be in this direction because again this one is trying to this one is trying to push this away so this is force of 1 on 3 so we find f of 2 on 1 so k first charge is 2 second charge is q1 and the distance between them is d1 or d21 squared okay so sometimes you may have negative signs for the charge we don't want to we, we, we don't need to worry about the sign so we'll just use magnitude here okay the sign will be taken care of by the duration so we don't need to worry about the sign so just use the magnitude so k is 9 times 10 to 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared first charge is 10 nanocoulomb and second charge is 1 so 1 nanocoulomb is 10 to 9 nano means 10 to negative 9 and this q1 is oops my mistake sorry we are finding charge on 3 so not not one, sorry. So F of two on three. That's the charge that we are considering here. F two on three, two, three, sorry for that. Okay, so the third charge has one, two on three, uh, two on three, okay. Q2 is 10. Okay, that's 10 and q3 is 1 times 10 to negative 9 coulomb okay and the distance between them is two centimeter okay so it's given d is two centimeters which is 0 0.02 meter is that right 0.02 squared okay if I do the calculation I get can you guys do the calculation Let's try, because you will be doing this kind of calculation a lot. So I want you guys to practice and see what you get. Can you use that? Uh, you use a scientific notation for that. Ten to negative four. Okay. And the force of one on three would also be exactly same because they have the same charge and they are at the same distance. So that's k q one q three. Okay. First and third charge. And distance is d13 squared. So q1 is 10 nanocoulomb, which is exactly the same as that. And q3 is 1 nanocoulomb, which is exactly the same as that. And distance is also same. So that would also be 2.25 times 10 to negative 4 Newton. Okay, so that's the force. Now we want to find f net. So f net would be sum of these two. But because it's a vector sum, so we need to consider the negative sign 
or uh, the sign for the forces. So if, so considering positive x to be um, positive number and negative x duration to be negative. So F23 So let's see. This should be two, three, not that. So negative F two three is positive. So two point two five times ten to minus four newton. And the other force F two one is negative. I used I don't know why I used the wrong notations here. So this is force of two on one, that's fine. This is F of one on three, that's fine, I don't know. So this is force of two on three. That's three, okay. So let me write it here, so F net would be F of, just use the vector sign F of two on three plus F of one on three. So that's the vector sum. And F two three would be negative because it's in the negative duration. And F one three is positive because it's in the positive X axis along the positive X axis five times 10 to negative four Newton. So they are same, so they cancel. So the F net is zero. Okay, so there is equal and opposite force. That means you feel zero force. The charge feels zero force. Okay, so that's that. Now let's say the two charge, the charges are not on the same line. Okay, so consider a problem where you have You have a negative charge at the origin, that's Q1. And then you have another charge here. So this is negative. So that's negative charge and you have positive charge also on X axis. So let's call that Q2. And then you have a third charge on Y axis And that's also positive. Let's call that Q3. So we want to find, and uh, one more thing. So the distance between these two charges is five centimeters. And the distance between these two charges is 10 centimeters. Okay, so we want to find force of one and two on three. Okay, so that's what we want to find. And you might have seen this kind of problem in physics one, um, the force problem. You have an object here and these two objects are either pushing or pulling this object. So what's the force, net force? So how do you, how you do this kind of problem? Any idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So some, so first you need to see which way the forces are always, that's the first step. So this one will try to repel that, which way uh, it would be along that way. So that's the duration of force F of two on three. And this one will attract that because these two are negative and positive. So the force due to this one, Q1 on Q3 would be that way. So this is force of one on three. Okay, so you have two vectors. So look at 
the vector diagram. So that's one vector and we have one vector down there. So you need to add these two vectors, f of two, three, and f of one, three. You cannot just add them like scalar because they are not scalar quantities. So first find the magnitudes. So f two, three is uh, nine times 10 to nine, which is the value of K. And then the charge, Q2, Q2, uh, let's see, what's the charge given? So this one is minus 50 nanocoulomb. This one is plus 50 nanocoulomb. And this one is plus 30 nanocoulomb. Okay, so two is 50 nanocoulomb, 10 to nine, negative nine coulomb. And then third one is 30 nanocoulomb, 30 times 10 to nine minus nine coulomb. And then distance between the two charges is, what's that distance? So we need to use Pythagoras theorem here. This distance is not given, but you can find that by using five squared plus 10 squared, which would be, <clears throat> Eleven point two centimeters. So this would be eleven point two centimeters. So the distance is eleven point two times. You need to convert centimeters to meters. Ten to negative two meter, and that's squared. Always remember to convert the units to standard unit. Okay, nanocoulomb to coulombs, and centimeters to meters. So when you do the calculation, you get. 1.08 times 10 to negative three Newton. And then next you find force, that's just the magnitude, so we don't need to worry about the vector. So force of one on three is nine times 10 to nine. One is, charge of one is 50 nanocoulomb, 50 times 10 to negative nine, and then Charge of three is 30 nanocoulomb. And the distance between the two charges is 10 centimeters. So 10 times negative two meter, and that's squared. So what's the number? Uh, that's, if I do the calculation, I get one point three, five times 10 to negative three Newton, okay. Now we need to add these two forces. We cannot just add them as usual. So we need to use a vector approach. So first you find the X and Y component of this and find X and Y component of that. So put your all, all your X forces on one side, okay, so, and all the Y forces on this side. So what's the F23? So let's look at the picture. Okay. So F13 is all along Y direction, so we don't need to worry about its X, X component. So F13 is, it's all along Y. So 1.35 times 10 to negative three Newton. And it's pointing down. So we consider down to be negative, up to be positive, right to be positive and left to be negative. That's always the thing that we usually do. Um, so this would be negative because it's pointing down and then this F23 has two components. So we'll have this component of X23 and that component of X23. So let's find that. So to find that, we need to know this angle. Okay, we need to know, let's see. Um, 
let me use different color here. So we need to know this angle. which is this angle. So how do we find that angle? We can find this angle first and then 90 minus that would be this angle. So let's first find this angle. So how do we find this angle? Yeah, so 10, Theta would be opposite, opposite is five and adjacent is 10. So theta would be five over 10. What is that? So 10 inverse of one over two is say, say it again, sorry. Is that angle or value? 26.6 degrees, okay. So that's 26.6 degrees, but we want this angle, not that. So 90 minus that, so what's, what is that? 90 minus, okay, so 63.4, and th this angle is vertically opposite to that, so this would also be 63.4, okay? So that means this angle is 63.4 degrees. Okay. You are taking this, this, which, which triangle you are taking this? This one? Here? Yeah. Or here? Uh, I guess you can do that, but the distance here is unknown, right? We cannot, the, the, the known distance is only in this triangle. We don't have the distances here. Did, did you mean something else? Yeah, that's how you find the tri uh, angle. But again, which one you think is opposite here? So you, you, are, you are making a triangle here, that's what you said? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. But how do you know these distances? Opposite and adjacent. You are not given, right? But I mean, you can use this triangle. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I mean, yes, you, you can do that. It should, yeah, it should give you same answer. But I mean, if you want to do it from the known ones, you can just use this triangle. But yeah, you can do that. So now we want to find X component of this force. So X component is this one. So which is, we know, we know that uh, X component is given by F cosine theta. So we can just write number here. F is um, that 1.08 times 10 to negative three Newton and cosine 63.4 and that's negative because it's pointing to the left. And then Y component would be 1.08 times 10 to negative three, okay? Force times sine 63.4, okay? And then you add X to X and Y to Y. So you add X, X to nothing here, so 0.8 times 10 to negative three Newton cosine 63.4, and then you add these two, okay? So, so you add these two. minus 1.35 times 10 to negative three Newton. And then let's call this sum Fx and let's call this sum Fy, okay? So the net force then would be using the Pythagoras theorem. If you have two vectors, then the net of that would be 
given by f x squared plus f y squared here it's sum so you s square that and you square that and take the 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 sum of them those vectors those numbers and then take the square root okay so when you do that uh, you will get 6 point 6 point 2 times 10 to negative 4 newton okay and then you can also find the angle angle is tan inverse of y component over x okay that will give you 38 degrees okay i think we are out of time but we'll do more practice of this uh, next time and that will make the things more clear so we'll do lots of practice on this one But if you guys have any question, I can answer the question. Otherwise, we're done. Have a great weekend. See you next week.